Welcome to another episode of Women in Focus. I am thrilled to interview our uh, guest today. She is here all the way from Jammu Kashmir. She's an activist. She is a lawyer by profession and has been visiting Vancouver. Her name is Deepika Singh Rajivat. You're most welcome in our program. Thank you How so are much, you doing? Ma. Thank you so much, ma'am. Uh, the last name Rajivat. Yeah. So is it Kashmiri? No, it is not Kashmiri. It is. Uh, my husband is Rajput, so I have borrowed this name from him. So you changed your name after you got married? Yes, I did. <laughs> and so what was your uh, maiden name? That was Deepika Thusu. Ah. I'm a Kashmiri Pandit. I'm a Kashmiri Brahmin. Right. So I'm Deepika Thusu. Maiden name was Deepika Thusu. Now I'm Deepika Singh Rajavat. So um, you were here for a, for a purpose. Yeah. And, and I asked you for a radio interview. Um, what do you think of Vancouver and why are you here? Yeah, yeah. like Vancouver is a, it's a beautiful place, a well-disciplined uh, place, I believe it is. And uh, I, I get strength, I get positive vibes. Uh -huh. And the way I've been treated here, the way I've been welcomed and honored, that's like getting uh, uh, positive vibes. That's like getting support, that's like getting strength. And that makes one to fight again. That makes, makes one to, you know, uh, uh, be on job. Mm -hmm. So I am receiving all the positive energy from Vancouver and I'm collecting them, taking them with me through my country and then utilizing it step by step there. For your strength. Yes. What are you fighting? I am, I'm trying to work for unheard. Unheard. Yeah, people who die unheard. Hmm. So that's like when I say unheard, it gives me goosebumps. I've seen people. I mean, no one, no one hears them. No one, no one takes up their cases. Hmm. No one, you know, renders justice to them, and they die like that. Hmm. So untold stories. That's what you're interested yeah, in. Yeah, that's what I'm interested in. So, uh, Deepika ji, uh, for a person who is just giving. Um, strength to people who are unheard and you're telling their story how do you make your livelihood how do you how do you give yourself money to to live <laughs> yeah i'm a lawyer uh, sushma ji i'm a lawyer for last uh, 11 years now yeah. okay. i'm a human rights activist but then i don't earn uh, the kind uh, of money that other lawyers do not exactly. I am earning. I uh -huh. have good work as a lawyer, and uh, I'm quite. My work is quite appreciated. People come to me. They they think, no, she the lady who can get us justice, mm -hmm. or she can plead our case well in the court of law. Mm. So I am that way very happy and quite honored. Uh, so that is there. But then, as an activist, I'm not earning. As an activist, it's just internal satisfaction. Mm. It is satisfaction to my soul, which I am doing. It is that. You know, uh, Sushma ji, frankly speaking, like had things been very good around, like had I been financially very protected and placed well, I think I would have not worked as a lawyer, like the routine work which I'm doing. Currently. Uh, yeah, currently, like the routine work. Because I believe sometimes, like I should be forgiven for this, but then I believe sometimes like it's wasting time. My requirement is somewhere else. I am required, I am needed somewhere else. For, I mean, it's the that just wastage of time but then I should be forgiven for this but then it is there my, my heart beats for unheard and I really want to focus and dedicate all my life for them I found out about you from Gurpreet Ji and I also read about the Asifa Banu case yeah. and that's how I found out about you can you in a nutshell tell me what happened in that case um, Sushma ji, that case was uh, like um, in 2018, like um, a Gujar girl on a Gujar girl was, she was eight year old, she was raped and murdered. And that too, the case is from District Kothua, mm. uh, District Kothua, Jammu. Like it is uh, District Kothua, Jammu and Kashmir. Mm. So that case, and uh, I was like, I was doing a case at that time of a judicial officer mm. who also uh, acted the same way who, uh, you know, raped her, mm. raped his maid. So I was busy in doing his two case. cases. Okay. Yeah, I was busy in doing that two cases, and that judicial officer has been suspended. There is an FIR against him, and surprisingly, he is behind bars for the last two years now. Mm. That judicial officer, and then at the same time, this case also happened. The mm. Asifa's case also happened. But then I thought, no, I am required. Like the way I say, Sushma ji, mm. I believe unheard requires us more. Mm. So I believe that time also, like. Uh, 
I thought, no, I need to approach them. Yeah. The parents of the girl. Yeah. So I approached them, guided them well, took them to the Honorable High Court for right. the monitoring of the investigation which was conducted by the crime branch at that moment. And then I felt, no, there is a charged atmosphere around the polarization, the, the conflict going on, the tension mm -hmm. which was at peak at that moment. I said, no, time is like I need to go to the Supreme Court, get this trial transferred to some other part of the country. Mm. So we chose a place, the Honorable Supreme Court chose a place which is Pathan Court and trial is going peacefully there now. So why was why why did people say that <coughs> you were no, you were hired as a lawyer for the young woman and then after that you are no longer the lawyer for the <laughs> That's a technical clarification I need to give yes. Sushmaji. The technical clarification is that I'm a private lawyer. Right. A private lawyer has no role in the criminal trial. That's true. Which is CRPC says. So I'm right. governed by CRPC. As a lawyer, I'm governed by CRPC. I'm governed by the Indian Penal Court. And in my state, that is Ranbir Penal Court. So I'm governed by Evidence Act. These three major books govern a lawyer, mm -hmm. govern the system. You know, the criminal trial is governed by these three books. Mm -hmm. So uh, CRPC says, like the Honorable Supreme Court judgment says, that a private lawyer cannot uh, take part in criminal trial from prosecution side, ah. from defense side, the private lawyers can come. Yes. From the prosecution side, the government counsel would be there, the public prosecutors would be there, the specially appointed public prosecutors will be there. So, Sushma ji, uh, when I was required in high court, I was there. Yes. When I was required in Supreme Court, I was there. I fought to thin nail. I fought for them. It was at the at, at it is like Sushma ji. It was at the cost of my life. Yes. It because was, you were threatened. Uh, yes, I was abused, threatened. And people said that being a Brahmin, you were trying to uh, support a Muslim support girl. A Muslim yes, girl. that happened. Like, I mean, it is like, I, I, and Sushma Ji, I tell you one thing very clearly, right? Sometimes I believe people, uh, people don't play their responsibility well. No. They don't perform their responsibilities well. I mean, uh, no one understood, like, I was not going to Pathan Court because I was not required there. No, because you are, you are not hired by... The, the the government the government yes. to do that yes i want to come and ask i want to take a short commercial break and then come back and ask you about your life why did you want to become a lawyer and an activist right. that i'm sure must be a very interesting story <laughs> stay is. with me okay <laughs> dipika singh rajwit is our woman in focus today don't go away we'll be right back Welcome back to uh, Women in Focus. Deepika Singh Rajavat is our Woman in Focus today. Deepika ji, um, we were talking about you as a lawyer. Right. So you are a lawyer in India and you practice your law in the state of Jammu Kashmir. I am so interested to see that your arms have, you know, I mean, you've got... It's a beautiful tagline, Sushma ji. Which you only know what the it weak says? can be... Cruel. Cruel. It says those who are mentally weak are cruel. The bold are always gentle. The bold are always gentle. Yeah, bold are always gentle. So I try to be bold, I try to be gentle. I believe all those who are cruel are weak mentally. Yeah. Yeah. So the atrocities are committed by the weak because they are mentally weak, they are cruel. The bold are always gentle. They would, they would never commit atrocities. So where were you born? I was born in a village Karehama, uh, Sushma ji. In, in Jammu Kashmir? You know, yeah, that is in Kashmir. Uh, village Karehama, Karehama falls in district uh, Kupwada. Okay. District Kupwada is part of Kashmir. So I was uh, born there. But in 86, 1986, my parents moved to Jammu. Uh -huh. Both were in education department. Uh, so they moved to Jammu with the other siblings, like the family. We all moved together to Jammu. So how many siblings are you? I, <laughs> we have a very beautiful family. We, I have five sisters actually. Oh, wow. Yeah, I have five sisters and a brother. Uh, are you the oldest? No, I'm not. the. I'm at number three. <laughs> so <laughs> you're in the middle sandwich. Yes, actually. <laughs> <laughs> and And... What is your, you said your parents are both in education, okay? Yeah, my parents were in education department. Father is no more. Mm. Mom is there. Uh, she uh, is retired now, taking care of us. So ensuring like, uh, she, is, she is that uh, booster for us. Isn't that beautiful? Yeah, that is. Because without her support, things would have not been like the things are now. So when you were growing up, uh, did you always want to be a lawyer? 
Yes, Sushma ji, I always wanted to be a lawyer. I remember like when I was a kid, hmm. I used to play that game of lawyer, lawyer game. <laughs> So I used to have I used to tell my friends let's argue like lawyers. Achha. So that that uh, zeal was always there to be a lawyer. Right. But and and I after like when I grew up I realized no to be a lawyer I can do more constructive things. Take the poor to the courts. Yes. Get their get justice to them. Yes. Follow up their cases because I believe it is courts are the important tools. So, but before becoming a lawyer you were a journalist i was a journalist i was writing stories and i was like sushma ji as a journalist you can do a wonderful job yes because it is a journalist has a completely it's a fourth journalism media is the fourth pillar mm -hmm, you know mm -hmm. so as a journalist you can verify the facts you know send a complete correct message mm -hmm. across that is very important you know uh, guide people mm. and today the journalism has gone to an extent where the false stories are uh, connected oh, i was going to ask you about that it, that must hurt your feelings that actually hurts me and in asif's case also mm. in, in 2018 also uh, some of the media houses really did a very i mean they did not perform well so they did a poor job they did a poor job and which which damaged me mm. which damaged me without verification of facts without speaking to you without conducting a proper investigation or a survey doing your homework you keep on doing table stories and you publish them you air them without thinking like this can damage someone's reputation this can damage someone's life no they would not do that hmm. and this is prevailing sushma ji this hmm. is happening so as a journalist and now as a lawyer um do you see that there there can be probably maybe i mean i i used to think that the journalists in india i worked with times of india uh um, for a little while while i was in england and i always felt that you had to be very factual yeah. but but even in america uh, the the fake news is the biggest now people are using uh social media to spread fake news do yeah. you feel that that's happening in india as well that's actually happening and in asifa's case this actually happened there mm. this uh, the the uh, communal violence took place on the fake news this there was a news like they media houses uh, published stories on the case like they are they, they are hindus mm. and polar, they are the hindu community is being targeted that is why they've been falsely implicated so media did not try to use i mean i mean properly conduct survey and do factual stories this happened in 2018 also when you um, when you did you leave your journalism to to become a lawyer how long did it take you Uh, no, I was together doing it. Both of both the things both together. Both the things I was doing it. I was. Right. A, I'm still a journalist. Yes. I'm not ceased to be a journalist. <laughs> In so, your heart, you are. Yeah, I am still a journalist. Like uh, sometimes courts ask me, judges ask me, "Oh, you stop being a lawyer. No, you stop being an activist journalism in the courtroom. You are just a lawyer. Just perform your role as a lawyer." <laughs> But I think I do my 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 advocacy. Uh, as a journalist and a law, as as a journalist as an activist right. so that uh, that thing is in my blood now yes so it's like the inspiration yes yeah so do you feel that being a journalist has affected you being a lawyer not at all not at all has it been a has it's, it it's strength it strengthened it's, you it has it has strengthened me yeah. like it's the exposure i have got the confidence i have got i use those things here in uh, my practice also right the exposure i got when i was working as a journalist right so you said in the beginning of the interview that you want to give voice to the ones who are unheard yeah who are these people that you are trying to help sushma so, ji like um, you uh, you see uh, women Hmm. right uh, you see the rape victims uh, you see the landmine victims throughout landmine victims landmine victims throughout country mm -hmm. you see children child labor and uh, uh, a lot of things to be done in uh, in india mm. and above all law to be implemented properly making someone to implement law that is very important sushma ji mm. and i believe until and unless we uh, we initiate a collective uh, movement mm. we we get we get strengthened and we, we 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 initiate we pledge to be together mm. until and unless sushma ji mujhe lagta nahi like i don't think things would 
move in a positive direction until you realize your duties you know what sushma ji yeah. uh, i i have been uh, reading i've been saying like uh, people talk about their rights right people claim their rights yes. oh these are my fundamental rights my human rights but no one talks about the duties that's it right so if you make someone understand see look this is your duty hmm. i think rights will be automatically protected you you well said i want to talk to you about you talked about the landmine uh, cases i want to talk a little bit about that but let's take a short break and yeah. come back uh, deepika singh rajivati is our woman in focus today don't go away we're going to be right back Welcome back to Women in Focus. Our Women in Focus today is Deepika Singh Rajput. We were talking about your life in India as a lawyer. You're you're fighting for people whose rights are not being given to them. They are not being heard. And you talked about landmines. Yeah. Where are these landmines? Are they all around the border of uh, yeah, uh, Kashmir yeah, and yeah, Pakistan yeah, and Yes. it the border is between two countries mm. right uh, and mines are laid there so when when you're talking about the people you would like them to be moved from there yeah w- what area are we talking about uh, we have like i i i worked in punch yes i worked in rajouri uh, these two areas i was earlier also working for and uh, I focused much on these areas, these two areas. Sushma ji, I want to tell you, like these two areas were at one point of time militancy ridden areas, militancy oh, really? hit areas. Really, militancy was at peak in these areas at one point of time. Now it has come down, right? So these you would find um, the all kind of victims in these areas. Really, and when I, I tell it to everyone, like you talk about um, uh, women rights, you mm. talk about human rights. go and please visit these areas you will feel pain there you will see people suffering you will see women uh, being exploited mm-hmm. they don't have you know they don't have livelihood mm-hmm. they don't have a dignified livelihood and so was i have a dream to work on providing dignified livelihood to uh, women that's mm-hmm. my dream like i seriously feel like talking is good mm. uh, conferences are very nice mm. but at the same time if you really want to rehabilitate someone mm. give that person dignified survival and opportunity to earn survival in a right. dignified manner because i believe like uh, sushma ji when we talk about women we need to uh, keep one thing in mind that they are still considered they they are still considered soft targets like we celebrate women's day we cut ribbons we go in the conferences we sign uh, treaties we hold conventions but at the same time women exploitation is at peak women are exploited at workplace they are sexually abused it is it is going so much mm. that someone has to be there and we need to be there to stop it and sushma ji if you will ask me then mm. what can be the measures to stop it mm-hmm. i think uh, that's a war subject <laughs> that's a war subject to discuss what can be the measures yeah. i think first of all you need to change this yes parents have a role to teach their kids how to respect women yes and and above all we need to think like it's her body yeah we have no right on it right she has the only one who has right on right it right on it so all together sushma ji i believe like um, a lot to do a lot of things to be done and uh, Uh, it can be done only when we all are one i never asked you about uh, you know you you told me that you were born uh, in india you're a lawyer are you married uh, yeah i am married i have a daughter yeah she is 7 uh, plus now and uh, did you bring her with you or did you no she's not here no. she's still there and she's missing me <laughs> but uh, sushma ji i must tell you like one thing um, Uh, which i was not opening up earlier with yes. now i am gaining that courage that strength to open up with that i'm a single mother in a way i see you know sushma ji when you are a single mother mm. you face challenges yep as a single parent you do you do as a single parent you do 
you come across a lots of problems mm -hmm. but you have the courage to face them yes. and when you face them you smile and then you are a warrior <laughs> so that gives you immense pleasure and happiness and you are proud of yourself <laughs> um, people are so blessed to have you come and visit vancouver i know that gopi ji is very happy you visited our parliament buildings yeah uh, how was that experience that was completely awesome yeah different from was, the indian politics yes, <laughs> i was it was like it was a, something new happening around yes. it was like oh i need to tell these stories to them they are functioning like this oh isn't that beautiful yes so when you take what is the most beautiful memory that you will take back with you to india <laughs> uh, <laughs> getting in candid conversation with you <laughs> <laughs> that's so kind of you thank you dipika ji it's been a pleasure meeting you and talking to you it's an and honor i wish you all the best in life and may the goddess give you more strength yeah. to to realize your dreams thank you so much ma'am thank you pleasure dipika singh rajwat has been our woman in focus today don't go away we'll be right back